Hello everyone. Uh, this is a fourth video on ASI's uh, XYZ tracker plugin for Micromanager. In the last video where I talked about XY tracking, I didn't have access to live specimens, but now thanks to Sean Lockery's lab, they given us some C elegance marked with some TD tomato dye. Uh, and now uh, and they make great specimens uh, to show uh, how XY tracking works with the plugin. So I have Micromanager here, uh, the plugin's up and running. I have two light sources, one direct, one AP. Um, it's about a 540 uh, nanometer LED here. So um, uh, that works kind of well for the TD tomato dye, although I think a 540 nanometer LED would be better. Uh, this is about a 620 nanometer LED for direct illumination. That kind of works for our dichroic, so that's what we have. I'll be switching between direct illumination to AP illumination uh, because it's much easier to find a specimen than direct illumination. I'm using a point gray camera here. Uh, uh, the plugin will be recording pictures from a point gray camera and that's what will be used for tracking the plugin will use for tracking i have a pco pixel pixel fly sorry pco pixel fly camera on a second imaging path um, and it's running outside of macro manager um, so that could be your main data acquisition camera apart from that the plugin is mostly controlling uh, uh, an XY stage, a 4 TPI XY stage uh, through ASI's uh, Tiger controller. So at the moment, at this point in the development of the plugin, uh, the plugin only works with ASI's Tiger systems. In the future, I hope to expand it to other ASI controllers and also third party controllers. But at the moment, uh, the plugin, uh, at, at least off version, 0.33 the plugin mostly works with ASI systems uh, for this demo we won't be doing running Z so it doesn't matter if you have a Z drive or not just XY with a tiger system and a camera is all that's needed okay uh, I'm gonna start acquisition okay and I'm using direct illumination so yeah so first I need to calibrate the XY of the camera uh, calibrate the XY um, sorry I'm gonna need to calibrate the camera with the stage that is the camera might be perpendicular to the stage travel or there could be mirrors and so uh, we have a small routine that we run XY calib um, that will uh, uh, move the stage uh, once in X and then in Y and then it sees how the images have shifted and uh, it fills up these uh, boxes with appropriate settings. This is the uh, gain of the error or the multiplier uh, that is applied to the error uh, when it sees an X error. Um, this is a multiplier for um, uh, an X error that will be applied to Y. So that is, if there's an X error, right? Uh, this is the gain um, of the, on that error and that will be applied to X axis for correction. This is the gain that will be applied to y-axis. So as you see, by having this one and zero, uh, if there's an x-error, uh, a correction will be applied only to x-axis and no correction will be applied to uh, y-axis. And similarly, these are for y-errors. Okay, so first we need to calibrate that. And so, uh, let me see. It's best to do this. I'm gonna lock it here because later on, if you wanna find a worm quickly, I'm gonna come back to it. So I'm gonna zero it. Uh, I'm sorry, not lock. And then I'm going to go find a piece of the agar that doesn't have <laughs> any specimens on it. Yeah, this should work great. Okay. I'm going to use LK tracking. I'm going to mark uh, this feature. And then I'm going to run the start calibration routine. And what this does is it moves it in X and it moved it in Y. Oh, I didn't think I saw... Okay, it quickly moved it in X and Y, and this is the result it came across. When it moved it in X by 10 microns here, you can change it if you like. If you have a small, uh, bigger objective, I'm using a 40x objective, by the way, um, and if that's too big for your objective's field of view, you could reduce it or increase it. Uh, but it moved about 10 microns, and for that, it coincidentally found 11 microns, 11 pixels, sorry, change in X, and then... Uh, about minus 10 uh, pixels when it moved y in 10 microns. 
and so it populated this okay I'm just gonna round it up you can leave it as it is I'm just gonna round it up to 1 and minus 1 okay good I'm gonna clear it up now okay and now I'm gonna I'm ready to find my worms so let's see <laughs> oh, I found one okay I'm gonna quickly put it in uh, epi illumination okay uh, there we go and I'm not gonna use LK sorry I'm gonna use uh, mean shift I'm gonna quickly try and see you can lock onto that and now lock now we are following the worm that's it okay uh, you can um, mean shift applies a rectangle and tries to keep the blob in the center of the rectangle I'm sorry mean shift first turns a grayscale image into a binary image and it does it using the threshold so that's the cutoff point anything below the threshold is turned into black uh, anything uh, higher than the threshold is turned into white so by increasing the threshold making the blob size smaller and less noisier because that means uh, in the grayscale image things have to be more white uh, than gray uh, to for it to be turned into a completely white and then uh, if I reduce the threshold as you see now slightly grayer or even darker things are uh, converted into white so that's binary right a pixel is either zero or one so it is that <laughs> there's like a bunch of worms and they're pretty active here I'm gonna adjust the auto exposure here so we have a better view we're seeing I'm, I'm adjusting the Z manually here and uh, so yeah I don't know much about the worms biology I don't know what part of it is it is somewhere in the midsection okay so you see it's tracking X Y is working and I'm just uh, talking about what the threshold does I'm going to increase the threshold here since uh, I want the tracking to be slightly precise oh wow I'm blurring out now <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's it's robust to Z drift, but not that much. You know, if things become too blurry, then there's not a big enough blob for it to latch on. So that's basically the image that's probably the point gray camera is seeing, and that's turned into an image that looks like this, just a binary uh, image, and uh, it's it's got a lot less detail, but that means less a processing time. So this algorithm is pretty fast. Uh, so at the current frame rate and everything, so it's tracking nice and well and I can increase the radi the size of the rectangle and the main shift is trying to keep this blob in the center of the rectangle uh, as much as possible so when the blob moves it's going to shift the rectangle uh, so that center of mass of the blob is at the center of the rectangle and I query where the rectangle is and I figure out what the uh, position pixel position of the feature is and I send uh, and using this gain values here uh, I figure out a correction to send it so by the way this is the X gain uh, this is the gain on top of this uh, and you can inc change it in real time if you increase it more it becomes too much it starts yo yo yoing a bit I think about 27 seems to be good enough and uh, yeah so you can try and see what works best for you at some point I think you're gonna start seeing it yo-yo uh, yo-yo a bit or make unnecessary corrections it starts to ring okay let's see here 50 and right now wow it's strong I think a good measure of when the settings are, are right is the worm's gonna stay pretty center uh, in the center of the image so let's see and find a point where you start to make too many corrections and lose the worm. Okay, we are seeing some Z drift, so I'm gonna fix that. Yeah, now you see it's more shaky actually, so it's bouncing a bit more, it feels a bit more elastic. Okay. Yeah, see that's coming from a very high gain. Ah, there you go, now it's like bouncing like crazy so yeah you don't need that much I'm gonna bring it back to 20 okay but we want too small again and the tracker won't be able to keep up with the worm and we will lose it let me start all over again uh, try it on another thing okay let's find somebody can we trouble that guy enough okay ah found one 
order click on it left clicking tags the sample and right click locks on it I think the threshold is too high so I'm going to reduce it okay now we have a stronger bob blob it's tracking on I'm going to adjust the exposure on this camera to see what exactly is happening here okay there are three of them there maybe slightly in a different z plane so I'm going to fix that with that yeah it's, it's running it's not as fast this one is not as fast so yeah so we are tracking so that's mean shift uh, and it works well for uh, this scenario and uh, oh you see uh, these worms came too close close to each other and now the rectangle is now trying to average these two blobs and trying to stay at the center of them until it moves too much and then it just latches on to the one that's the biggest okay so that's mean shift let me show you another routine called binary tracker and it works the same way as mean shift that is it turns an image into a binary using the same uh, threshold mean shift threshold for mean shift but then instead of using this rectangle method of finding where the blob is what it does is it uh, takes the binary image and tries to find shapes in it and then it tries to find the shape that's the biggest and then uh, we get the position of that shape and it's now just latched, latched onto it and locks, it, locks to it so let me show you an example so now three of them here actually this might not be the best one because uh, it works best if there's only like one thing of interest in it okay so take this for example I'm gonna click on it now it starts tracking with binary and it's automatically uh, you know um, finding the biggest blob and latching onto it and then and then when I right click I get locked and it's doing it so yeah so right now it's kind of reading this entire thing as one big blob um not sure not sure what it's trying to do here so that's the problem because you don't actually have a control on which uh, blob you want to track and it's artificially determining the biggest blob to track um it might not be best in all scenarios here it's kind of i think i'm going to increase the threshold yeah so that kind of remove that big blob away because that could be just from some reflection or something and then and now it's not trying to track the biggest one and as you see it's uh, going crazy it's like switching between different objects there but it's tracking it's tracking that guy okay I'm gonna unlock here I'm gonna try and see I can find something else, something far away. It's not gonna be as crazy. Oh, there's something here, but it's on a different Z plane. Okay, see that was that's guys fast. So I'm gonna click on it so it starts that, and I'm gonna right click on it. There you go. See, it almost left the flame, but I was able to lock onto it. Yeah, now it jumped it into some some other guy. Okay, and that's there's the worm there in uh, view increase the size so that one yeah there you go this routine is actually pretty robust that uh, see as you see the, the size of the rectangle is changing and it's scaling depending on what the size of the blob is I'm going to intentionally move my focus knob so I defocus the image Make it as blurry as possible and as you see it's still tracking it's still tracking even with this blurry of an image so it's not as sensitive to z-drift as possible at some point it's gonna lose it but yeah check that out it's so faint I'm still able to track it bring it back to focus and go the other way now see that it's so faint and binary tracker is still working it's still able to pick out a blob this blurry image and it's tracking it right only 
disadvantages can't really pick what you want to track it's just going to try find the biggest object in it in the image uh, biggest blob and lock onto it and try to keep that in the center of view as possible so that's binary tracking ah looks like we just switched on to something There you go, that's the x, y position as you see that's changing and that's the correction that's being applied. Oh wow, it blurred on its own. Let's see when it fails. Ah, <laughs> okay, see that? That's much brighter, so it automatically locked on to that. Okay, I'm going to manually try to focus. There you go, okay, manually focused it on. I'm following that. So, yeah, that's XY tracking. Uh, we showed XY tracking on a C elegant uh, mark with a TD tomato die. And uh, oh, I think we lost it. Now it's locked onto a stationary sample, I think. Huh. It's still moving. It's still moving. <laughs> Oh, looks like it switched on to some other guy. Yeah. So that's XY tracking using mean shift tracker and then binary tracker. Um, there are other trackers that might work well for your application. Uh, I'll use the LK tracker and then color, mean shift, uh, motion shift, other ones. And uh, hopefully, you know, you can keep adding more trackers to the plugin. Wow, that's barely anything there and still tracking. Thank you for watching. Bye.